What's up painting friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof. Today we're going to do a painting tutorial of this beautiful waterfall right over here. This was requested by one of my subscribers. She actually found my channel from searching for how to paint a red barn and she found my painting tutorial on that. And uh, she actually had her daughters recreate the painting and they did a wonderful job. They're very talented. So I know you guys are gonna do great with this painting here, uh, but this tutorial is going to be using acrylic paints and we just have an 11 by 14 inch canvas panel and some brushes. So let's uh, get rolling with the materials list and then get started with the painting. For our materials today, we're using acrylic paint. I'm using the Liquitex Soft Body Acrylics. You are welcome to use any acrylic paint brand that you would like though. And for our colors, we have yellow oxide, we have phthalo green, sap green, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, sky blue violet. This one is burnt sienna, burnt umber, black, cadmium free red light, yellow azo, and titanium white. For our paint brushes, we have a little variety here. We have, this one's like a semi round tipped, about half inch size brush here. This one's about the same size, but it's a flat tip brush. It's one of my new brushes, which I love very much. This is a small round tipped brush, and this is a larger angled brush, uh, about one inch thick. So these are the brushes I'm planning to use today. Uh, I might use a, an, an even smaller flat tip brush, but we'll see. All right, we're going to be doing a painting of a waterfall, and I'm gonna put the finished painting right here so you guys can see how things are progressing in comparison to the finished painting. So I'm going to start by just kind of sketching out the scene. I'm gonna dip this brush in the water a bit, grab some ultramarine blue, just water it down a lot so it's nice and translucent. And I'm gonna figure out where I want the waterfall top to be. And that is going to be pretty much center. So you wanna, from top to bottom, just and from left to right, let's just make a little, uh, crosshair there for the center of the canvas. And now that we know that center, we're gonna put the top of our waterfall there. We actually can put break it down into quarters here. So the waterfall top basically goes from there to there. So just do a straight line there. And then next thing you can do is put a little dot from top to bottom and the midpoint on both sides. Do it again so we have our quarters going up and down. Now we're going to put the tree line where we see more of the waterfall. So in between these two is where this tree line goes. So we're just gonna do a diagonal line like that. And then on this side, the tree line comes down even further. So we're gonna make the diagonal line come down just like that to our bottom quarter point. Grabbing a little more water there. And next, let's see. So from this point here, you wanna move up just a little bit and bring, not quite to center, but kind of close. And then come down about an inch. And we're just gonna throw a rock like right here. Got a big rock there. <clears throat> we also have a tree line coming this way. So let's see, we have about between our top quarter and our second from the top quarter. Our tree line basically cuts that in half, so let's do another half for that right here. And that's about where our trees are, just above the back of the waterfall. And then they come up at a diagonal like this, getting, as things move closer to us, they get bigger. So that's what's happening here. We're seeing far off into the distance where this river is just carrying out. And then on our left and right of the canvas, it's really close to the foreground. So things are getting much bigger. And we just kind of make those diagonals. And I'm using kind of squiggly lines for now because we're gonna have trees there. So we're not going to see a perfect diagonal line kind of like I sketched out initially for that spot. All right, so let's see. 
We got the tree line basically sketched out. You know, you're gonna have trees kind of like this. You don't have to do that yet though. Just letting you guys see what it looks like here. And then th at this point where I put the top of this rock, I wanna carry a line over. And then I wanna make a little diagonal line like right there. And we can just put another line like right here. Gonna have another little line right here, just for some rocks. Kind of like a big oval, little oval here, right there. And then on this diagonal, let's just put a couple little ovals right around there, a couple ovals on here. These are some rocks. And then you could put like a little block right there. So it doesn't look like a waterfall just yet, but we're building in our shapes and that's going to make it much easier once we get some colors and more, uh, more detail into this painting. All right, and then farther back here, let's start to like add a couple rocks here. And these lines are getting closer and closer together as we're moving back. And that's also helping us to build that distance because here things are closer to the viewer. So we're gonna see a little bit more space in between the rocks and then farther back, things get smaller and closer together. All right, and that's basically what we're working with there. All right, so now that we've got a basic sketch, I guess I can throw a rock, couple rocks in down here too. We've got some rocks. There's a big rock right there. I made that rock too big. <laughs> yeah, we've got a rock right there. Another rock right there. All right, cool. Now let's start painting in the background. So I'm gonna put that brush in the water and I'm gonna take my large angled brush and we're gonna blend some of our titanium white with our light blue violet, sky blue violet, and some ultramarine blue. And let's do a little black. It's kind of a gray cloudy day. Keep forgetting how powerful that black is. <laughs> I'm gonna mix that again. And we're just gonna put that base blue color everywhere in the sky. Just going back and forth. You wanna get good full coverage on the painting. And start to kind of go cover up the um, tree line just a little. Okay, so we got the sky base color filled in there. Now I'm just gonna put that brush back in the water. I'm gonna switch to my kind of semi flat tip half inch brush, and we're gonna take some white, just blend it very slightly with that blue color and start to make some puffy clouds. So you're kind of pushing the paint on the canvas here to start. Kind of pushing it on there. And it doesn't look perfect just yet, but it's gonna look better in a little bit. I'm just getting the paint on there first. It's kind of going in these little puffy lines, kind of. Need more white up here. And now we're gonna do a blending technique where we just take all of the extra paint off of the brush and just kind of blend it by kind of twirling the brush around at different angles and letting it blend into that base blue color. And whenever you start to get some paint on your brush, you want to keep getting the extra paint off your brush. So it's just kind of pushing the paint around and giving it that 
textured, cloudy look. It's kind of pushing into the canvas. You can push from different angles depending on which way you want that white to start blending. You just don't want to leave any streaky white spots like this right here. You want everything to be soft and blended. And then if you want to darken things up, you can take a little more black and your blue. And you can build up some shadows. Ooh, that was a little darker than I expected it to be. And again, once you get it on there, you can just soften it up just the way you did with the bright whites. It's kind of like a stormy, cloudy day. Just make sure you don't leave any super blotchy lines of paint or anything like that. Like you want it to look really blended. darker up here too. If you want to make it darker on the edges of the painting, that'll kind of draw your attention into the center of the painting a little more. So you can build up your dark clouds a little more on the edges if you'd like. All right, and that's good for a start on the sky. I might come back to that with some more white later. Uh, but for now, let's leave that. And now let's block in some base color for the trees. So we're just gonna take some sap green and some burnt umber and some of our yellow azo and our yellow oxide. Taking some white, a little ultramarine blue. Then I'll just fill in this section back here. So I'm holding the brush at this angle just to get those like spiky tree looking lines there. <clears throat> Take a little bit of our uh, phthalo green. can start to add a couple kind of sideways branches. Add some more yellow. You don't have to make this part perfect. You can just add whatever type of trees you'd like. They could be all pine trees. You could have some more deciduous type of trees. Take some more sap green and phthalo green. Get that right here. And then at the bases, we're gonna, the base of each of these trees, we're gonna mix um, phthalo blue with uh, burnt umber and just get a really dark kind of base color. And now we're starting to lose that pure straight line and starting to get a little bit more natural looking. Can blend a little bit of black in there too to darken things up. Just keep it nice and dark right at the base. Over here we got a little tree. Take a little more phthalo blue. So keep it really dark and cool. All right, then we can go back to our yellow oxide color, some white. Just keep building up the shapes. If you wanna to switch to a smaller brush here, you could. That will give you a little bit more detailed lines for your trees, keeping things kind of loose for this painting. And you're welcome to go into more detail or more refined lines if you'd like to.
And we're just blocking in this base color, just kind of covering up all of the white space on the canvas here. Same thing over here. You can take some sap green and some yellow. And it's good to start with a variety of greens with your base color, just so that you're already starting to build on top of a variety of green. You're not using the same color for everything. All right, so now we got that tree line in. Next, this is where it gets a little tricky with the waterfall here. I think next I'm going to take some burnt umber and ultramarine blue and just kind of put a straight line in the back there. And then I'm gonna rinse off this brush really well so I don't have any more green on the brush. I'm gonna pat that dry, nice and clean and dry. And now let's take some white. We're gonna go with white. So we had two ways we could approach this. We could have done all the rocks first or we could have like painted everything here brown and then added the white on top or we could have started with the white, which is what I'm going to do, and then add the rocks. So we're gonna take that sky blue again and white, maybe a little hint of black. We don't wanna use pure white just yet. We're gonna use pure white for our highlights and take a tiny little dab of that Burnt sienna color too. And we're just gonna cover this all up, go right up to that green spot without trying to um, get, don't let the green bleed into your blue color too much. And we're just gonna kind of cover up down to that first row of bigger rocks that I had there. If your green bleeds in a little bit, that's okay. See how mine did there? It could just be reflecting a little bit of the colors in the forest, so not a big deal. I'm gonna kind of go around that rock because it's large enough that I can work around it. Take a little burnt sienna, or burnt umber, sorry. I'll start going there. Just going right up to the green, trying not to leave too much white space. Right here too. Get a little more burnt umber in there. I'm just starting to like add some water where I know it's flowing around the rocks a little bit here without like totally covering up the rocks. All right. Now we can start working on the rocks. So let's put that brush in there and switch to a flat tip brush. This is my smaller flat tip brush. And I'm going to mix some burnt umber with some black and some yellow oxide. And take a little more black. And we'll start to add way back here. We've got a couple little rocks that are visible. So they're just really thin little lines at first. This rock's kind of going over the top of that water visibility line. If your uh, watercolor paint here, the color of your water is still wet and it's frustrating you, you can go take a little break and come back and paint these rocks over the water once that paint color dries. Or you could just keep working like I am. I'm just kind of pushing that water paint color aside. 
because I'm using this flat tip brush, it kind of has shorter bristles and can push the other paint around a little without over blending. And I'm just starting to add some rocks. My rocks are getting much larger as they're coming closer to the foreground. They're getting more spaced out as they're coming to the foreground. Got more rocks on the sides, it seems like here. You don't have to put your rocks exactly where I'm putting mine, because that would make things a little difficult. But as long as you initially sketched out like a few major rows of rock, that will help you a lot. So I had that initial one back here, I had one here. one right here this big section here so just think about it in sections so like you have one section two and three and that might help you instead of just like oh it's a waterfall with a bunch of random rocks <laughs> and most of these rocks are a little rounded they're not super sharp and that's what you would expect at a waterfall because the water erodes the rock down and makes it more round. Mixing a little ultramarine blue in there. So now it's starting to take form a little bit better. Thala blue. Got a rock right here. Another rock in front of that rock. Kind of goes right to this line where we start to have more of the falls. And some of these rocks are going to get covered back up with water to some degree, so it's good to just get all those rocks blocked in first and then you can add water on top of them. Might make things a little easier. And then here we have a nice little waterfall coming down to the side. So there's a rock here that kind of, there's water coming like this. Blocking this rock here. I'm gonna darken up this side too, add a couple more rocks over there. There we go. Now we can get this one. And again, this shape doesn't have to be totally perfect, like an exact match to what I'm making here. And over 
over here. Got a rock right there. Some darker rocks on this side. Gonna add more thalo blue just to cool that down some more too. Just keep it really dark over there. Got a dark rock right here. water partially covering up this big rock. Filling in all the space that I left open after painting in the water. Can even add a few more rocks over top of the water. I've got like a diagonal kind of waterfall here. And a flat tip brush is definitely the way to go with these rocks. It's just so much quicker to paint those nice defined edges of some of these rocks. All right, we got a couple more little spots. Gonna get a little sienna in there too. Just to kind of cover this all. The all the rocks that we need here. Just making sure I got everything. All right, I think we're basically covered. So now that you guys can kind of get an idea of the sense of depth and how our rocks right here are much larger and there's a little bit more spacing in between the rocks and then back here, everything's a little closer together and things are smaller. Let's just keep moving forward to the foreground and then we will start to add detail to everything a little bit later. Uh, so, 
first. Let's block in some of those rocks. I'm gonna move up a size uh, to this flat tip brush to just block in base color for these rocks, mixing my phthalo blue with my burnt umber and my black. And we're just gonna fill these in. And right here we've got another rock, which goes to this rock. Get some sienna. This rock right here. Let's get some ultramarine blue going. Got a bunch of rocks in here that are kind of going to get painted over. So it's definitely not the easiest photo to paint from. So if you guys get a little frustrated, uh, just take a step back and uh, let it sit for a bit, and then you can, you know, kind of figure out where you left off and come back to it again. There's definitely a lot going on, lots of detail. Go with black down here. And over here we've got some more this rock. And there's a rock here. Lots of rocks. All right, and then you gotta fill in the space here. So we're gonna take some of our sky blue, some burnt umber, more ultramarine blue. Just fill that in. All the spaces in between these brown rocks. More ultramarine blue. Don't leave any white space. Get some more ultramarine blue for down here. Got some more little cascades right here.
And I'm just kind of blending those a little bit. It's starting to dry, so just doing what I can. And use more of our shadow color right in front of that rock there. All right. Cool, all right, so now we've got our base layer of paint down. You can tell we've got like the basic part of the waterfall here with that little diagonal flow down. And then there's like a couple of minor little bits of water rushing over the rocks, but it's mostly flat at the base. And then it's kind of going off into the distance, going farther into the scene. And now we've got our base color down everywhere. So I'm just gonna rinse off this brush. I'm gonna keep working with this brush right here, the flat tip brush. And we're gonna start to add some detail to the trees. So I'm gonna move pretty quickly with the trees here. And I'm just gonna take some sap green first. Just start to add like a pine tree, kind of in the middle there. So I'm just making these little spikes with my, kind of patting the brush onto the canvas there. Mix a little bit of black in there. get even darker at the base. And I'm just gonna wipe that paint off my brush, go for the yellow, and add some white. Ran out of white already. And we're gonna take some of our cadmium free red light. And here we can add some more autumn colored Take more yellow, red, and white. And some of that yellow oxide. Just start to add some autumn colors in here. I'm using, I'm hitting like the corner tip of the brush to make it give, give me more of like the deciduous type of tree. And take more of that red, some sienna. Put that in here. Wipe off the brush, take more of my sap green with my yellow oxide. Start to add some more trees front here. And just remember things are gonna keep getting a little bit darker as they're getting towards the base. So you can start to add more blues and your shadow colors towards the base, closer to the bottom here. And then we're gonna add a couple more little shadows in here. Take some burnt umber. And then to kind of separate the trees, I'm gonna mix my umber with black. Just put a little kind of separation shadow line there. Then we'll take some sienna, add some shadows to this red tree. And go back with a couple more little highlights on top. And let's take some yellow. This guy here. Then we'll take our sap green again. Start to add another pine tree. So just holding the brush, getting those nice long lines. black as we're getting closer to the base. Now we'll take some phthalo green, mix that with our white and our sap green. And if, whoops, make that brighter. I'm gonna add a little yellow oxide too. Because that phthalo green is not a very natural tree green. And again, holding the tip of that brush. 
could also use your round tipped brush for these rounded leaves. I'm just kind of trying to work quickly here. Start to add more of these little dabs. And a couple little highlights there, but mostly darker at the bottom. And then we're gonna take some sap green, some phthalo green, some phthalo blue, and some brown. Good shadow green color. Just build that in at the base. Take some black. Start to add another little shadow mark between the trees. So you guys saw how I'm switching between my cool greens, my warm greens, starting to mix some browns. So here's my sienna with my sap green. And I'm making each layer of trees have more and more different colors. If you use the same colors for all of your trees, then they're not gonna stand out like mine are here. You need your greens to have some variation so that they can uh, stand out from each other, the trees. So they don't all look like a blob of the same tree. Got a little bit more of our like orange color here. Helps that it's autumn as well. You can see a little bit more color in the trees than you would normally. Just putting like dabs and dots. Take some more browns. Take just some umber. And go back with the highlight. And we'll take some sap green, our yellow again, and white, and our yellow oxide. Start to add some more pine limbs here, branches. Okay, take some black with our phthalo green. So we're gonna keep our contrast stronger in the foreground too, so that's why I have darker shadows and brighter highlights. Some more phthalo, maybe a little brown. And some black. Some super dark shadows there. And just wiping down the brush a bit. Take some phthalo green. And we can add some branches right here. And 
I'm just gonna add some sap green and black as this goes down. There we go. And we'll add a highlight. Mixing our yellows and white. You can add a highlight to this tree here with these limbs. So I'm just holding this brush at an angle to get that kind of branch-like look. Oops, a little too much there. And again, if it's easier for you guys to wait for this base layer to dry and keep layering on top of dry paint, you can do that too, but I'm just working quickly here. All right, so that side's good. Now let's go over to this side. Let's use some more of a brown. And some more of our other green. Now you can just start kind of reusing some of the greens on your palette that you already mixed. One thing you kind of want to avoid is using pure black as a shadow color, especially in the far background. You're not going to have like true dark black back there. You're gonna have like black mixed with a color, but uh, you don't want things to get too dark in the far distance, or else it kind of you kind of lose the uh, sense of depth. Mix a little ultramarine blue in there. Whoops, a little too much blue. <laughs> All right, back to my greens. side seems like it has more pine trees. Switch it up a little and add more of this like deciduous looking tree. Adding some highlights on there. I'll take some more of our browns, umber, and sienna. Build those up down here. And let's take some more phthalo green. Start to add that in. Nice little shadow in between here. All right, and now we've got some nice light green. It's going to take some of my yellow oxide and my see more yellow oxide Whoop. and my other yellow are both in there and this one kind of comes out this I'm very very gently holding the brush here and just like letting it tap that paint onto the canvas Here we gotta get that guy. Let's take more of our sap green. And we'll add this here. Let's 
So you guys can see the different ways I'm holding the brush to get these different trees. Basically for your pine trees, you want to hold the brush so you're getting those nice long pine needles. And then for the deciduous ones, you want to use the flat tip brush, use the corner of it to get more of like the circular leaf-like textures. Mixing my sienna with my phthalo green there. Some of that over here too. Take some white, our sap green, and our yellow oxide. And some highlights on this one. Starting to get darker as it goes down, just from the colors kind of blending in. And we gotta add some shadows to that guy. So I'm gonna take some phthalo green, phthalo blue, burnt sienna. And let's take some yellow too. highlights again. Mixing some of my red and yellows. sprinkle of the fall colors. And we need another shadow up in here. Here, let's take some black with our sap green, make this really dark shadow. And then we'll take our sap green and our yellow oxide, some white, more white. Start to add highlights for this one. The trick is to kind of get these trees to stand out from each other. You just don't want to look like a blend of random brush strokes unless that's what you're going for. If you want it to look more abstract, then you could do that. Take a little more phthalo for down here. Put a little phthalo on 
some of these spots in here just to build up a couple middle tones there and then you can build up your shadow again all right let's go back up here let's add a highlight to these guys Separation. All right, and that's a good, quick way to get your trees painted. It's not the most detailed, but it reads as trees. All right, so let's keep moving and let's next start to work on the water some more. So we're gonna take our white, our sky blue violet. And we're just going to add our water line again. We're gonna take some umber too and a little sienna as well. Start with that line in the back. And this is where you can start to add some water rushing over some of your rocks. You can add some more little shadows in there with some sienna, ultramarine blue. Maybe a little more black and ultramarine blue. Kind of makes it look like there's some rocks under the water. Just adding a couple little lines here. And we can go back to our white with just that little bit of brown and blue, add our highlight again. And you wanna add a little more ultramarine blue and brown to your water towards the sides where things are a little bit more in shadow. From all these trees. Could take some more sienna mixed with that light blue and white. We'll add a little oxide. It's kind of like your muddy watercolor. Start to add some of that right here. Anywhere you have a waterfall, just add like a little bit of that brownish yellow color. All right, and we can switch to our round tip brush again that we first sketched out the scene with. Take our white. Just get a little bit of that light blue in there too. And you can have a little water on the brush to water it down so you can get really nice, thin detailed lines. And this is where we're adding our highlights now here. So just make this go over. Just little sections with the muddy water and you always need to have a nice highlight like right at the base of each little cascade
just trying to add more water running over the rocks. And think about like the actual science of this as you're painting, like your top of your rocks are probably not gonna have water rushing over them. If it's like a rounded top, there's probably only gonna be water rushing down the sides, like in between little cracks where the water would, you know, make it. <laughs> direction that you you know make your little arcs for the water that's where your water's gonna be running just make sure that also kind of makes sense like actual bright white at the top parts of the waterfalls and at the base where there's a little highlight. Let's see, we got a little more of that like sienna color here. Here you kind of can just like make up wherever you want your water to flow because it's not everyone's is going to look the same here. You can dip your brush in the water a little just to make it flowier.
more black and blue. A little more black. The water by the corners here and the shadows. Take that and start to add some highlights. Take some white, that little bit of that sienna color right down here and just kind of like push the brush around. Just use some pure white if you really want to boost that highlight. some of that pure white on here too. This is like the highlight portion of this waterfall. So pure white is our, our nice highlight color. So we didn't want to use any pure white until now because if you started out with pure white, then you can't go any brighter than that. So this is a good highlight to use. Just kind of put it over top of your other water, but not completely covering it, like just more at the tops of each little cascade. Same thing back here, use that pure white as your nice little highlight. Just in a couple sections, you don't wanna overdo the white. All right, so that's looking nice. Gonna add some kind of highlight type things to these rocks. So I'm just gonna mix blue with my burnt sienna color. Had a couple of those reds and oranges mixed in there too. And some white, and that kind of gives me like a neutrally gray brown. Can mix a little more red in there. And I'm actually gonna use a flat tip brush for that one. And just add your little highlights. These rocks are kind of strange. I'm having, they have like very weird weathering patterns and it's kind of tough to tell like how <laughs> these rocks are oriented. I don't see any like straight rock bedding planes or anything like that. Now I'll just add some shadows underneath. Kind of blend the shadows in a little bit to those highlights. If I were doing this as a commission, this painting would probably take me somewhere like closer to 20 to 30 hours for this size canvas. There's just so much detail in this painting that I would, you know, love to show you guys, but uh, for tutorial purposes, we don't want to go too much into detail because you guys will get bored. <laughs> going back in and starting to add a couple more of these rocks in here, just in little specks, kind of where the 
it's peeking through the water. Just using black here. That just really brought it more to life, I think. And some more black over here. Just darkening things up. And once we get farther back, we gotta start blending in some other colors. So it's not too dark. So I just blended in some of my sky blue and white is in my black. Okay, we gotta add highlights to this rock here. We can see some. A little bit of highlights on that one. to some of these rocks. Gonna add some highlights to these rocks down here. Just mix sky blue, black, and that burnt sienna with the, where the white was. And we're just moving kind of quickly just adding some random little highlights on the rocks so they still read as rocks but have a little bit of texture let's take more ultramarine blue for this one over here and we need some straight up black got some really dark shadows on these wet rocks in the foreground
This rock down here has lots of deep shadows, very dark. can go back with those highlights again, take more of that sky blue, ultramarine blue, and some sienna, and more sienna. <laughs> there we go, and just add some of these highlights on top of this rock. Again, not going into too much detail. brighter right down here. This one back here has got some highlights. All right, so there's that, and finally, let's just rinse off that brush, take some white with our blue, and start to add more of our highlights kind of coming in here. Got some more water, rushing water coming down. And you could go back to your round tip brush here if you'd like. Or you could keep using your flat tip brush. Either one's good here. The flat tip brush does some really pretty stuff like this that the round tip brush can't do. So when you're closer to the foreground it might make a little more sense to use the flat tip brush. some water kind of rushing over all these rocks. And we're just going to highlight this. Just kind of let your brush very loosely touch the canvas and kind of drag around, creating that watery look.
Okay, let me just go like a little bit of sap green mixed with yellow oxide, kind of algae stuff on some of these rocks. There's some in there too. And I'm gonna do another round of highlights on that tree, cause why not? makes it stand out even more. All right, let's call that a finished painting, guys. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today for this painting tutorial of this beautiful waterfall. Uh, sorry, it was a little bit more uh, detail-oriented than I expected. Sometimes when I look at a photograph, I think, okay, there's a waterfall, there are trees, and there's sky. That'll be easy. And then I start painting it, and I'm like, this is a little bit more complicated <laughs> than I thought, and it's a little bit tough to explain. So hopefully you guys followed along uh, without too much trouble there. I think the rocks are going to be the most challenging part of this painting. Just so it's, it's kind of like a puzzle, because you have so many rocks and they get, you know, smaller going farther back into the background. So as long as you were able to get them sketched out the right way, you should be good. Uh, but I could definitely see beginners getting lost in the rocks there. So hopefully that wasn't too challenging for you guys. If you did recreate this painting, I would love to see your finished painting. You can post it on your Instagram account and just tag my Instagram page, the painting stoof. And I'm looking forward to seeing your work. Also, if you guys have something that you would like me to paint, then you can send me a message on Instagram with a photograph that you'd like me to create a painting tutorial for, and I will get to that as soon as I can. So thank you guys for watching again. I hope you have a great day and happy painting. Bye-bye.